Hey running friends, I hope your day is off to an awesome start. It's Monday as I'm filming this, so for me that means long run today. I went back and forth honestly about even doing this on the treadmill even though I think my longest run ever on the treadmill has been like 13 miles, but today I have to do 16 and between 16 and 17 but it's cold outside it's not even that bad i think it's just that we've had taste of spring and warmer weather and just going back to the cold makes me not want to do it but i got dressed for the cold i'm going to go out there um <coughs> i might end up kind of coming back and getting on the treadmill for the last part we'll just see how it goes but i'm just kind of gathering up my nutrition here so i thought i'd show you what i have going on um as well as what i had for breakfast so i've already had two of these energy balls which i make on another video so i'll make sure i link that in case you want the recipe and see how to make them but it's like oatmeal chocolate chips peanut butter flax um just really really good before a run or great to get in some protein after run they're just yummy i also had a little bit of cereal with almond milk and a cup of coffee and obviously lots of water but we just have an espresso machine so i like having that just black coffee just, I just usually have one. I'm not a huge, huge coffee drinker, but I do love that first cup in the morning. And just getting my nutrition here together, so I was gonna show you what I guess, what I have. Um, I don't always do the exact same thing. Tailwind is what I, we've been having, my husband and I, um, or Sword is another one, but Tailwind is very similar. It's very easy on your stomach. So this is a powder, you put it in and mix it with water. So I'm gonna mix it up. I always mix it with warm water first so it dissolves better. Then I usually put ice in it after to cool it off. Not as worried about that today because it's cold, but obviously on a warm weather day, that would be more important. Um, so this has 50 grams of carbohydrates, but I already used half of it. So 25 grams of carbs. I try to get like between 35 and 45 grams of carbs every 45 minutes to an hour. So now something with this, this is something that I just keep sipping though. That's what's great about this is you don't just have to take this all at once. It's more continuous. I just, you know, take several sips starting, you know, early on, like maybe even 15, 20 minutes in. And that's what's nice about that. Um, I'm also gonna take this with me. Just this, this is just a fruit strip from Target, nothing special, but this has 12 grams of carbohydrates in it. I might, I might throw two in there. I'm doing, what did I say? 16 to 17, did I tell you that already? Um, 16 to 17 miles. So I'm gonna have, mm, let's see, you know, take in some, some carbs at least a couple of times on this run. And then I know this sounds terrible, but I also have, we have these ginormous jelly beans left over. I'll probably cut them in half, but left over from Easter and it works. It's not ideal, but it's sugar, it's carbs, right? Um, you know, there are better things out there, but you also don't have to like just have specific running nutrition. You can also use things like dates and raisins. Any of those things work that are going to give you that quick sugar, um, those quick carbs that you need to have the energy that you need to get through your long run. Um, let's see, I'm taking my hydration vest, so that's how I'll have the water bottle, throw the jelly beans in there, and vest, gloves, it looks pretty good out there right now, and I'll let you guys know how it goes. Today's a little bit of a different day because two of my three kids are home from school today. It's teacher work day. My pre k -er, she still has preschool today, but the two older ones are home. My husband has been working home from home this whole last year, so... He's going to try to work while the two kids are doing who knows what. I don't know, right now they're playing a game and probably have way too much screen time, but we do the best we can, right? All right, guys, let's get this run done. All right, just waiting. Oh, there it goes. I was waiting for my GPS to lock in. My Garmin, we're ready. It's not so bad out here. Just need to get a little motivated. Oh yeah, porta potty with the people who are finishing their basement across the street. All right, let's go. Hey guys, I'm 45 minutes into this run. I'm gonna take on these fruit leathers. I just have a little baggie inside here. Just pulled out of there. Normally I would just eat it on the run, but we eat that, those 12 grams of carbs, maybe a couple jelly beans on the run. I'm gonna get into some marathon piece work here in a minute. So need to get that energy going. So let's start that in like half a mile, but it's going good. 
All right, I am almost 11 miles in, like hour 36 or something like that. So a little less than an hour to go. I've been doing two miles at marathon pace and then 0.75 recovery between. I'm doing by three. So I've done four miles at marathon pace so far. Um, just in the middle of my recovery in between here and then two more miles at marathon pace and then bring it home easy. So these last two are gonna be tough, but we're gonna try it. Here we go. Hey guys, and then the last mile, I'm like 6.1 something and I finished up to 17, but I'm glad it's almost over. My family is meeting me at <laughs> the very end here. I was do live check on the Garmin so my husband knows where I'm at. Look at them. Say hi. <laughs> Thanks for meeting me. All right, 17. That's a wrap. My fam's coming back behind me. Let's see. 17. Wait, oh, three. It went away. Yeah. Anyway. I'm starving, but I'm going to go in and grab a snack. Just a little snack first before I make some late lunch. I'm going to jump in the shower. I have a, a conference call that got scheduled while I was running at 2.30, which I knew might be happening, which is fine. So, going to get that in here in a little bit. I'm freezing. <laughs> Just made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't know. Sometimes when I come in from a long run like that, it just whatever sounds good you know? And I recommend that. Your body will tell you what you need, especially if you expended all of that crazy energy. And I'm having almond milk. It just tastes good. A little bit of sweetness, protein from the peanut butter, carbs, all good things that you need. So I told my kids, because they're home today, that they're going to have to fold some laundry because I was doing their load of laundry this morning. Of course, they're complaining. I'm like, I just ran two and a half hours straight and I'm going to do laundry and work too. So do not complain to me. I'm sure you guys can relate all you parents out there. Hey guys. All right. I had my conference call, did a little bit of work and then finally I'm like eating something, a real lunch at like 3.30. Um, you guys might be wondering why, or maybe not. I do these long runs on Mondays, but Really, it has to do with the weather, and it started last year when I was training for Boston, and I had to train through these cold months, and when we had sports and kids sports and stuff on the weekends, I was not going to, you know, I wasn't wanting to do a long run at like 6 a.m. because it was dark at that point as well. So at this point, we're now ending April, still another really cold day here in Colorado, and I'm just kind of keeping to the Monday thing, but that's probably going to change really soon, and I'll move it to either Saturdays or Sundays and start going out really, really early. It's just with my kids' sports schedules at this point, it seems like we always have something early in the morning, 8 or 9 a.m. And so trying to fit in all of those miles before that time is just hard. So that's kind of where that comes from. But anyways, we'll see how that is going forward. Um, I just plan on doing these each week. I am 10 weeks out from the Sun Valley Marathon, which I'm doing at the end of June. Then plan to take a break after that, and I'm signed up for um, California International Marathon in December. So just thought it would be fun to kind of talk to you guys about my long runs and my weekly training and things like that. And I know we can all relate to each other, and um, marathon training is really, really hard, and it's a lot. And knowing that there are other people out there doing the same thing that you are, and maybe just seeing how... I go about it and challenges and triumphs and things like that. Hopefully that will help some of you. So if you guys want to see like a long run routine afterwards, I have that in another video. I didn't want to go through like foam rolling and all that stuff today. And to be honest, I didn't do what I really should be doing. I got in the bath. I took a shower real quick and literally with the wettest hair came to my meeting. Luckily in COVID, nobody cares about that stuff right now. And finally, finally eating and I need to foam roll and 
you know, sometimes it's just like that, especially if you are a parent and or it's just someone juggling a lot of things, it's just not always going to be perfect. And I want you to be able to see that. I do a lot of videos on here's what you should be doing and here's what I recommend. And as a coach, here's what you should be doing. But it's just, it's not always realistic. It's not always gonna look pretty. It's just about getting it done and doing the best that you can, including what I'm eating today. I just have this burrito, which this is a pretty, this e-ball brand. A pretty healthy brand. We get these at Costco and yeah, like I'm just trying to fit it all in. I'm not having time to cook today and it's healthy as I can get and it's got carbs and protein and vegetables and you know, things like that. Um, I'll probably have some fruit here in a little bit as well. And yeah, so I just wanted to talk to you guys really, really quick about just a little motivation thing. Uh, I'll probably have these in there, but just something that I heard on a podcast that I was listening to, to today, but it's the Build Your Tribe podcast and it's really business-based. Um, I'm an entrepreneur and run a business. And so I listen to a lot of things like this, but I thought it was really relatable to running. But the title was, Is Your Brain Wired to Be a Successful Entrepreneur? Entrepreneur, um, Dr. Shannon Irvine, but it's just about like rewiring your brain from negative thoughts, which is so common in running and something that we need to, most of us really need to work on. Um, and it just says your brain has a step-by-step -step process to wire success and unwire it. And that a lot of the things that maybe happened to you when you were really, really young have wired your brain to, you know, think about things in a positive way or a negative way. And I think a lot of people as runners, you know, you get in this negative, I can't do it. I'm not as good as them. Um, there's no way I'm going to reach my goal. There's no way I'll ever be that fast. And we need to just start reteaching and rewiring our brains to be able to say that we can do it. And I know I've gone through a lot of that myself personally, and I can pinpoint exact things that happened to me as a child that really started changing the way that I thought about myself in, you know, more of a negative way. Um, trying out for plays and not getting in. And even though that was nothing against anyone else, it was just automatic. I started to think, okay, well, I thought I was great at this, but I guess I'm not. So I'm not good enough as opposed to just keep trying and trying to get better. And so I think that that's something that really important can relay over to running and that there's going to be a lot of setbacks and hard times and times you don't meet your goal and you need to keep pushing through that and telling yourself that you are good enough. Um, and then just things like happening with friends in middle school and high school. And I used to be a super outgoing person and then things kind of changed that at that time. And anyway, the whole concept was neuro, co neuro coaching and, um, just trying to rewire your brain and have positive thoughts. And those are the most successful people. So if that's something that you can work on to drive out those negative thoughts, it'll make you more successful in your running journey as well. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. If you liked this format, let me know in the comments or if there's something else you would like to see. I would love to hear about it. I just want to connect with all of you guys on this channel. That's my goal. If you need anything, reach out to me. You can find me on readysetmarathon.com and I will talk to you guys later.